So what I want to do is what I want to talk about today is the new EX6 set and my impressions of the decks that were introduced and also the decks that seem really relevant that maybe be maybe are like a set or two old. The set introduces a lot of interesting cards. Um, and well, it'll be interesting to see like where the pieces fall, especially once BT17 drops as well. Uh, the decks I'm going to cover are these ones you see here. Demon Lords, Ragnar Lord, um, Shakamon, uh, Angels, Diabortomon, Mastamon. All the decks that were introduced in this set as well as um, you know some of the older ones that are still sticking around like Rapidmon Armor, Numemon, Ukamon, Finner Lugamon, uh, the Vaccine Armor stuff, God forbid, Mirage Galgamon, which has kind of come back. We'll talk about how, like, I guess the entire environment shapes around these decks here. First off, I the way I do, I do this for folks who haven't seen this before is I kind of talk about each of the decks. I give them my own, like, uh, rating here in terms of, you know, their uh, offensive power, defensive power, as you see, your speed, removal, and then ease of use. And then some of the things that I thought were interesting about them, some of the things I thought were fun, and some of the things I think are difficult if you're going to be playing the deck yourself. So the first one here is Seven Great Demon Lords, which is kind of like the poster boy of this entire set. And really powerful offense, like getting to your Ogudomon is incredibly, incredibly easy to win. It feels like it's almost like a, a no-brainer. I've had one case, uh, and this is actually when I was playing in Singapore, uh, a guy needed to use two Ogudomons to kill me, and he actually did it. So he still ended up doing it, like in the same turn. So, like, I, it didn't really matter. <laughs> um, so, it, yeah, whenever you drop this guy, your win condition, whenever you get to this guy, you basically just win the game. The new gate style, a great card, seven gated seven deadly sins, basically makes this a Royal Knights style deck where you just play big Digimon each turn. And then once you get seven different cards, cards, not Digimon, cards with the seven great demon lords uh, trait underneath the gate, you can throw it away, get your Ogudomon out from the trash and then ruin your opponent's life. Uh, so things that I thought were fun. I like the fact that we have another way to play a this like Royal Knight style deck. I think some people hate the uh <laughs> this kind of format uh, not format but this style this style of deck my friend hobby has a like large hate in his heart uh, for decks that just kind of like play digimon past turn play digimon past turn but he plays numamon ukamon and rapidmon vaccine or not rapidmon but uh vaccine armor so i can completely discredit his <laughs> his comments there <laughs> leave those at the door uh, he's barely playing the game as it is with those decks uh, and also the like i said before Ogdemon is pretty much GG's when he drops because he like basically rips seven things off either off the board or off your opponent's security and then makes a swing. And also the Demon Lords are, there's enough of them either released a long time ago or a couple sets ago or in this set that makes the deck really flexible and useful. It feels like you always have like a card for most situations. Um, specifically Leviamon, uh, the old Leviamon is very very scary with uh, the Biting Crush card. You've also got things like the uh, Lusamon Fall Down mode, the new one is having to, to give a player the choice to destroy one of their either Digimon or Tamers, and if they don't, you get to recover and they have to drop a security is so terrifying. That card is such a menace. Um, the new, uh, what's his name? The new Beelzemon has Rush and he can de-Digivolve, and they all like, like Turbo Mill cards into the trash so that you can basically get to play out your, or stack stuff under your, your gate more quickly is really good. So yeah, like everything in the deck feels like it's you have like an option for whether you know uh, you're playing against uh, an aggro style deck or a mid range style deck. Or you're playing against the control deck. It feels like you have something that you can do against everything. Um, some things that I think are difficult. Your game plan, like Royal Knights, does take some time to set up. You have to get seven different cards, set cards with seven different names uh, underneath your gate, and that takes quite a while. Um, there are times where you kind of just like your hand can be a bit bricky and. You have a long, it takes a long time to set up, and sometimes you might die during that time. There are other times where like your hand is like smooth as butter, and you're just like, you're just firing on all cylinders. Um, so keep that in mind. And also, floodgates are particularly tough to fight against. Uh, man, an opponent dropping a Chikurimon or a Solarmon just is like the worst thing that can happen to you, it feels like. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's just so painful. The deck does have some option cards that it uses. Um, things like uh, Pandemonium Flame, the two cost purple option that can pop one of your Digimon and pops one of your opponent's Digimon of an equal or lower level. Uh, some of the some of the decks run um, Rostrum, but that's, or, sorry, Biting Crush in English, but that is such a an expensive answer to a level or a three cost Floodgate. But yeah, uh, Floodgates are, in particular, can be problematic. 
so that's seven great demon lords poster boy uh like i said does take some time to set up defense is so so removal is great like pretty much all the demon lords have like some form of removal in one way or another uh, which makes pretty much all of them a, a good option in some some different situation and then ease of use is like so so it's kind of like middle of the road in this case like one is the small the lowest and then five is the highest for each of these uh to these categories. The next deck I want to talk about is Ragnarok. This is the deck that I was looking the most forward to in this set, and uh, it was a little lackluster, unfortunately. The, the new effects are really interesting, and as a as a contained set, this deck works well, pretty decently. Uh, it does struggle in, in the case of like some of the stronger decks in the game right now, but it definitely I've definitely seen it on list, and it's just like I beat like they'll they'll beat like a Magnamon or like they'll beat a Numemon. I'm like, how did that happen? Like, where's the sauce? <laughs> Um, but yeah, offense leaves a little bit to be desired because the deck is mostly building to get to your Ragnarok. You're kind of like playing like defense until you can get there. Once you get your Ragnarok, you can like switch it up on them, and you have like a big beat stick that's really really strong and almost untouchable. Uh, defense is good mostly because of the new level six option card they got access to. Uh, it's it essentially lets you uh, take a Digimon in one of your Digimon sources whenever it's destroyed, and just play it as a new Digimon. So for example. You can, if you have a level 6 in the sources of like a level 3 that gets just deleted or something, you can just play the level 6 from its sources for free on the board. Really, really nice. Um, so you always, you can like keep stuff on the board and get to your Ragnarok uh, more quickly. Even if your stuff gets like removed. Some of the new effects I think are really interesting. Like the, the fact that you can pay a cost. You can either like, you can either play the Digimon outright or you can like pay a cost and put it up underneath one of your other Digimon on board. And you can gain some effect, like whether it's plus DP or card draw, or in the case of uh, some decks, you you can like give your you can like taunt your opponent's Digimon, where you say, "Hey, at the start of main phase, you have to attack," and then you can like block or you know do something like the Ace card in this case. Um, you can like de digivolve everything, or you can destroy something. Like the that effect of being able to like play, pay a cost and then like get uh, another effect is used like stack and sources is really cool. Some of the challenges, though, is um, the support is really limited. The cards in EX6 don't particularly work very well with some of the older Ragnarok stuff. Of course, the Searcher cards in like the uh, the Searcher uh, the Searcher level threes that were introduced before, like Search Five, grab a Ragnarok and then one of the Legend Arms cards is great. But outside of that, like you're, it's like maybe one or two of like the previous like Brildramon or like Durandamon. It's like, you're mostly focused on the EX6 set, because they don't really play, those effects don't really play well with the effects outside of it. Uh, and also, it's a little bit, like, once you get your Ragnar Lord up, it's great. Like, he's invincible, he's massive, and your opponent, like, basically can't do anything, and he's got, like, some really annoying effects. But the turn after that, that Ragnar Lord comes down, the turn after, like, so, you go into Ragnar Lord, your opponent's turn finishes, your next turn happens, Ragnar Lord's not that great he doesn't really have any like huge staying power you're forced to use the cards that uh you can pay a cost to stack up underneath him to like make him better and you may not have access to those cards in hand a lot of times so like i was saying the the pressure is hard it's on the player to like find a way to keep a pressure after the the ragnarors play the turn after a after that you just have a like, big fifteen thousand dp digimon who can essentially gain other effects depending on what you have in hand uh, for that reason, uh, it doesn't have a ton of removal. Like, like level six, you have to pay like three, and then it's really uh, restricted on like the Digimon has to be lower DP than the current Digimon you have on board, or like you have to de digivolve lower than DP Digimon than the one you have on board. So you have to, you need to get to your Ragnarok to really make things effective. If you don't, it's going to be really sh like really tough to to like make any sort of dent in your opponent's board while they're playing their game. Next up is Rapid Mod Armor. So this wasn't introduced in EX6, but it's I guess still around and it's around to a point where I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, so there were there's essentially three armor decks right now. We're going to talk about all three of them at some point. The first is going to be Rapid Armor. The next one I think is going to be Vaccine. And then we're going to talk about Magnamon as well. Rapid Mon is probably the least popular of the three right now, uh, but they did get some access, uh, did get access to some new cards in things like the Cherubimon Ace in EX6, which is not a bad card at all. Um, it lets you play more Digimon, so you can play more Terriamon or play Lopmon to get the Alliance effect. Uh, it allows you to give DP minus alongside things like the Rapidmon X as well as the other Rapidmon cards in the deck, and it just it slots in really well. And because of that, like the Rapidmon X already gives like the deck really strong firepower, and the Terriamon Ace only makes your boards go wider. Keep in mind that it does have that overflow, so it's kind of scary. 
Uh, as always, the deck has kind of lacked a little bit of defensive power. Uh, like, you'll notice that things like Magnamon X and the, um, the Magnamon cards themselves all have blocker. Rapidmon X doesn't have blocker, and uh, neither does the, the Cherubmon Ace. So you gotta be really careful. You're mostly uh, relying on things like the Rapidmons that do have blocker level 4s, and I think... Does the level 5 Rapidmon have it? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think it does, though. Maybe not. So mostly level 4s, then. Um, defense can leave a little bit to be desired, because you're also losing at le your level 4s, which are access to your level 6s. So there's that. Um... Very fast, the new Double Typhoon option card from the starter deck is insane. It's so good. It's like, that Like that just basically makes, like, invalidates Green Memory Boost. Like, I don't need Green Memory Boost at all if I have the, the Typhoon card. I mentioned that we have the, the Cherubimon Ace, but you also have the Mega Gargomon Ace. The, fa the fact that your opponent has to play around both of them makes it really hard. Like, they, it's hard to play around both those cards. One where, like, you get more Digimon on board and they do DP minus. Another one where they cannot evolve and they cannot rest is pretty wild. Um, what was it? Cannot active. I can't remember the, the Mirage or the, the Saint Gargamon or Mega Gargamon Ace. In Japanese, it's Saint Gargamon. English is Mega Gargamon. Why do they do this? Just pick one name. Just pick one name. Some challenges playing the deck. So with all the good, there is like there. Like I said, this is the least popular of the three. And some of the challenges are getting over big DP walls. Uh, like. Enemy number one here is Magnamon X Antibody. Of course, the Tyrant Cup of Tyrmon exists, but like Magnamon X Antibody is a card you need to get over with this deck. And the fact that he can go, he can become unaffected by effects means that you have virtually no way to get over him. Um, you have to be you essentially just have to use your alliance effects to really, really good uh, I don't know, uh, to really good ends because just going in with uh, like a 1000 DP alliance from like the Lopmon that gives you the effect is not enough. You have to like f have like a level four or like a level five or maybe another level six on board to actually get, like utilize the alliance to swing over the Magnamon X, which means you have to have more resources on board than the Magnamon player does in order to get over them because they're not affected by effects at all. Um, also, um, there's like the challenge of like DP minus versus armor purge. The deck has really good defense in the form of armor purge, like I said, from the level fours as well as the uh, Rapidmon X. But DP minus being so prevalent in the game now, like just eats away, like armor purge essentially doesn't even exist. Because when you like rip off that the top armor card, the DP minus still is is still in effect and the lower level Digimon is always gonna die. So your Rapidmon here you see with 7,000 DP gets like minus 8,000 DP or minus 7,000 DP, then the armor purge comes off and then he just goes to a Terry Mon and that just dies. So, um, while armors are useful against pretty much anything outside of yellow, most of the decks right now have sport some form of DP minus, and so you this isn't really like a strong defense in the game at this point. Make no mistake, armor purge is good, but the current environment we find ourselves in means that it's just less useful than, you know, unaffected by effects. <laughs> Sure, we can set up Mega Gargo Ace by playing a Rapid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have the option there to like bam, bam, and play play both of them. Or well, not both of them at the same time, but like you can play the Cherubi Ace first to go and threaten the the second uh, Mega Gargomon after by playing level four. Oh yeah, yeah, you guys, you guys caught it. Yeah, there's like lots of shenanigans you can do with like the Rapid Mons and the Mega Gargomons, and like you can like <laughs> build the big chain. <laughs> oh. Uh, so some other like final things about this deck, uh, it is pretty fast. Like the fact that you can essentially skip the level fives if you want to uh, is really nice. You can just go from four to six, and he has some like the Rapid X has incredible effects to like give you memory, and he can make attack immediately, and you know he gives my up like a blanket minus four KDP. It's really great. And then ease of use, like the deck, even when I like didn't have all the new you know tools from BT16 with just the the Double Typhoon starter deck, the deck already felt pretty smooth. Once you add on the new support for um, you know, BT16 and EX6, the deck feels fantastic. So like it's a deck where you feel good using it, and it's just very you have a lot of options, so it's really easy to use. And the options are like pretty strong. Let's see, what's next here? Uh, Shakamon. So Shakamon was a deck that wasn't really on my radar at all. Uh, it was a deck that I kind of just thought was like they had like they had to fill out the set until like this was the way they did it, but it's actually a little bit more interesting than I gave it credit for. And I like I love being wrong because like this this kind of stuff being interesting and like like actually having some like decent strength behind it, it's kind of cool. So the deck is mostly like defensive focus until you get to shock them on out, and it's really cool because 
you're like basically spreading around DP minuses on the board. But as soon as like you get to the Shakamon, it's like the polarity shift, and it's like all of a sudden like all these like like weak whatever monsters just become like super buff and like swinging for two each. Uh, and uh, that combined with something like Venusmon is really really strong. You can essentially like use Venusmon to like hold out or wait out turns in order to like be, either build up your board or get to your Shakamon or find your Shakamon. The some of the challenges when I uh, when I tried out this deck myself is that like the uh, you don't typically digivolve up the chain with this deck. It's mostly like digicross focused. And the cool thing is that when most of these cards are destroyed or removed from the board, you can take the card, one of the like source cards from the Digicross and actually add it back to hand. That way you don't run out of uh, material too quickly, which is nice. Even with those Digicrosses, turns can sometimes still be a little bit expensive. Uh, the Digicrosses aren't like too much, like you're still paying like quite a bit for each of the Digicrosses, so you're not, it's almost where, it's almost like a Mega Zoo style, Mega Zoo style deck where if you're not given a bunch of memory, you're basically doing like one thing a turn, waiting, one thing a turn, waiting, one thing a turn, waiting. The way that you can circumvent this is by using like the memory boost cards to search out and being able to like go through some of the cards in your deck to find like the pieces you need, as well as like basically loaning out memory for later turns that you can like cash in to make a big play is really good, or is really good. Uh, but there is a bit of a balance there. So like I said, the deck, you need time to set up in order to get your Shakamon down and then actually do the polarity shift. Um, you can utilize Venusmon in that case, but uh, she at four costs is still kind of expensive. And there's this balance between trying to search out for what you need as well as uh, actually playing Digimon on board to set up to actually make the Shakamon play. That could be tough. That I, that labyrinth I think is like a little difficult to navigate. But yeah, it's, um, this deck is definitely better than I think anybody gave her credit for before the set came out. It was really interesting to see it do so well, or do as well as it's done uh, thus far. Uh, so yeah, like I said before, it's not the fastest deck in the world, because you're gonna need time. You're basically only doing like one thing a turn. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of removal. I think the uh, the Goku Mon is like the best removal the deck has. You're mostly just like kind of stalling your opponent's board. Once you, but once you get the Shakamon turn off, your opponent's just like, all right, cool, GG's next game. <laughs> uh, so that's Shakamon, pretty straightforward, I think. Next up is oh Ukomon uh, Numemon. So I actually talked about this deck in BT16, and it's I looking at how I talked about it, or how I rated it, definitely underrated, um, very very underrated. This deck's offensive power, its speed, its removal are all it, like it's so easy to use too. It's insane. Ukomon lower end plus like Floodgate is fine. Play a bunch of Numemons, Numemon X Antibody, Monzaimon, Monzaimon X Antibody, and then the like nastiest. Like, <laughs> like the STDs of level sixes, you just play those <laughs> in Ruin Mode, Death X, uh, Valkyrie Ace, Venusmon, any of the new, like if you want to run any of the new Ace cards that were introduced in EX6, you can do that as well. Just so nasty. But yeah, this, like this deck does so much and it does it so well. So like I said, what what's fun, if you've never played this deck, I, uh, I implore you to at least give it a try. Ukumon plus Nume X means that your boards are always very aggressive. Ukumon because you're always gonna have a card to promote the following turn once you promote it out. You're either gonna get memory off of that or you're gonna be able to search for the pieces that you need. Um, and then the next turn you can basically do it all over again. And if your Ukumon doesn't die that you promoted this turn, you get the effect the following turn as well. And that is, like, a, like that problem like steamrolls and steamrolls and if you can't stop like the first one, I feel like by that time, it's like too late. <laughs> uh, also, I talked about this before, but Monzaimon X is like a great way to blend offense and defense. So being able to play Digimon on board for free and then give something on your opponent's side of the board, like huge DP minuses is really strong. You keep offense, you keep defense. And in the case of like the Numemon with, with the Satsuki Tamer that just give itself a rush, you get something on the board rush, you can also just make a turn or swing that turn as well. It's so powerful. Uh, this is like this card is like so underrated it's so maybe it's not even underrated it's like it's not very rare but it, it feels like it could be like like a rare card i think it's like uncommon yeah or is it just common i think it's just common holy crap but yeah it feels like this card could be like a rare minimum uh some of the challenges playing the deck there are not many um, i really had to dig deep in my bag to find this one uh very weak to wide board dp reduction um so things like rapid x uh, the Valkyriemon Ace, Shine Greymon Ruin Mode. Essentially, everything you would play as your top end is like a counter to what the mirror would be. So, yeah. Uh, anything that just has like blankets of wide DP reduction is really good. Essentially, what would kill a uh, Digipolice, 
works here. The only problem with this is that uh, Platinum Numamon exists and he's 9,000 DP. And so if a Numamon X antibody dies or a car with Numa X in its sources dies, you can play this guy. He's going to live because it's 9k DP and he's also going to steal two memory from you. So your turn might automatically end at that point as well. Another challenge here is the deck is very momentum based. So if you get all your momentum stopped, it's basically GG's. It's hard to like completely like turn on the key in the ignition one more time. Uh, you're, you're basically like, you start you start out the gate, like moving at a thousand miles an hour, but you pray to God you don't hit a brick wall. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you want to uh, bully this deck though, Mirage Gagamon is a great answer. And we'll, but we'll talk about Mirage Gagamon in just a moment. It, again, if you haven't tried this deck one time, just, just try it once. Even if it's like on an online sim, uh, it doesn't have to be in real life, just give it a shot and you'll, you can understand the power of the deck very quickly. So fast. Yeah, it might be in the fastest deck in the, in the game right now. Uh, yeah, maybe tie for the fastest. Maybe tie for the fastest. The next deck is Finner Lugamon. Um, this deck really hasn't changed that much in this set. I mean, they got access to the new scramble cards, and if you've seen the video that I did, I actually talked about like some combos that Finner Lugamon can take advantage of to get into uh, a level 6 in one turn and make a swing with it, which is very strong, but it, that really hasn't been the case. I think the hard part about the the scramble cards, especially with this deck, is that you have to run like some other tech cards as well. That just messes up the the efficiency of the deck already has with like the SOC cards. But for folks who have never played this deck, I really implore you to try it. It's a really fun deck. Um, it's like OTK style, but it's not like a like brain off OTK just like press button win. You have to like your turn that you do the OTK has to be sequenced in a very specific way, and you have to navigate like how to do that like depending on what your opponent's board is. And if you mess up at any point during that combo, you just lose the game outright. There's like almost no way to ever come back. But if you get it off and it works correctly, it's very hard to lose. So, yeah, multiple roads. There's like lots of ways to win, um, but you need to like find the. You have to basically not mess up the line to do that. The scrambles have been not so useful, but they like. I mean, it's just another tool in the box, right? And with this next set, I suppose that. Maybe we'll see a couple of different builds of Finner Lukamon, considering like the Take Mikazuchi version, as well as I think they just got like some other SOC cards that would be just useful. Some challenges, alright. The challenges that this deck might face is like with the current speed of the decks, like you gotta be really on your stuff. Also, the invincibility that things like Magna X have, or things like Ragnalord have, can be problematic. Uh, in a lot of cases, Finner Lukamon needs to destroy something on the board. And if you can't destroy something on the board, it's, it's hard to make that, like, OTK turn happen. Uh, and then removal versus, in the same vein, removal versus armor purge is also really tough. Because, like I said, Friend Lugamon needs to kind of destroy, he needs to destroy something on board. And if you can't do that, then, yeah, an armor purge isn't destroying. You just pop the top off and you keep, uh, you know, keep on moving. The rating here, I think, is, I think I updated it a little bit. Uh, I kept the uh, five stars offense. The defense, because you are essentially playing with a, a little to no board most of the game, Maybe you like promote a, you know, a Lugamon to like take care of a Floodgate or something, but that's really about it. Uh, some of the new cards in BT16 were useful to like get into your combo later on in the game with like the new so Lugamon who can pop a, a 6,000 DP or lower. But I said before the armor cards are notably at 7,000 DP, which makes them just out of range for like those deletion effects to actually take advantage. Uh, removal is great, like I said before the. So Lugamon, Hell Lugamon also already exists, and the new, the second version of Lugamon that can pop a 3k or lower is really nice. So that's Finner Lugamon. Hasn't really changed much. We haven't really seen much of, uh, or many of the decks, like, optimized for the purple scramble. But, uh, who knows, maybe in the future that'll change. Uh, Vaccine Armor. So the second Vaccine deck, and this is, I think, the, uh, what I would have considered, I still might consider this probably the, the best version, uh, despite the fact that lots of people are playing Magna X right now. Um, but it utilizes the vaccine uh, engine from BT14 and things like Patamon and the Emissary of Hope with the new armor cars that were introduced in BT16. So, fun fact, most armor cars are actually free trade, but there are a select few that are vaccine trade. And those select few just so happen to be the secret rares from that set uh, in the case of these two here. So you can take advantage of their lines in the Rapid Mons, all the level fours, by even though they're pretty expensive to Digivolve, Patamon makes them zero. Uh, Emissary of Hope makes them one cost if they're coming from security. Uh, the training cards make them two cost. Uh, if you combine this with the level five aces in uh, the Magna Anjumon ace and the Anjumon ace, 
and maybe even some um, uh, some of the Shining Greymon level 5s to play Tamers down for free and then get Security Tech plus 1. Yeah, pretty powerful. And then you go into the top ends, which are like these behemoths in the Magna X and the Rapid X, and they both just do so much. Rapid uh, Magna X, because this deck focuses on messing with your security, he can very easily proc his own invincibility effect by just recovering. In the case of something like the TK Tamer from BT16, you can take a card off of the top of your security stack and then put another card on the bottom of your security stack. That just gives you the whole effect immediately. So that, get, that just turns on your invincibility without without any like work on your part at all. For that reason, defense in this deck is super high. It's so easy to keep Magnamon X around. And uh, it feels like once they get the first stack up, if you don't take care of him within like a turn, you might see a second stack the following turn after that. The, the effects and the memory gain and efficiency of this deck just steamroll. The TK Tamer, uh, the Patamon, the Emissary of Hope, the training cards, they're all, and the fact that this deck can like skip some uh, levels sometimes, and going from like the four to six, in the case of uh, Waking of the Golden Knight, the three cost yellow option card, you can just go from one of your armors into Magna X is insane. Like I said, I think it's the most memory efficient deck in the game right now. Uh, you can also, like you have the, I guess the drawback of using ace cards that have overflow, but if you protect them behind a Magnamon X antibody, not only is he hard to remove, but whenever he is removed, he's just armor perched. So your ace card actually sticks around. So your opponent has to have all the power to stop your level six, and then they have to take care of the ace card underneath it as well, separately. And like I said before, you can activate Magnum X with your own recovery effects, which is like super easy to do. I had to look really hard for any drawback for this deck. And to, the, the only one I could find it like, when you finish the game, you have to shake your opponent's hand and be like, hey man, that was a good game. And you know that's not the case. <laughs> you have to be like, you know, with all like the heartfelt love of a Digimon player talking to another Digimon player, you gotta be like, look bro, we was out there in the field of battle today and you know, you put up a good fight. I'm proud of you. But you know that like, <laughs> it was a, you saw them open, I don't know, uh, Dex Door to Goromon turn one, and you're like, oh, this is, this is a wrap. Like, I'm done. Like, this is already done. <laughs> I'm so sorry what I'm about to do to you, man. <laughs> I truly think this deck has, like, no drawbacks. Yeah, right now, there's not a lot any other deck can do to this. With the exception of stopping DP minus and then somehow getting over 15k in a single turn, there's no deck that reliably does that every single turn right now. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that means next up is gonna be Angels. So a lot of these decks in EX6 were like either yellow or purple, and yellow just all the Angels happen to be vaccine, so Patamon here makes his triumphant return. You gotta notice the theme with all the yellow decks if you haven't noticed it yet. Angels is cool. It's only in the past like two weeks or so people have really been messing with some of the cards like Dominimon and some of the ace cards for the Angels. Whether it's been in just a purely focused uh, Angel deck, or they've like splashed the Angel cards in with Mastamon, in the case of the list that uh, Misao Black uh, posted up when he won like that 100 man tournament uh, two weeks ago. Like the deck does, has some really cool stuff. It's pretty quick. Offense leaves a little bit to be desired. It's like pretty middle of the road. Just because um, while this board, your boards can go wide for this deck, it's harder for them to go tall, for your Digimon to go tall. Like getting over that 15,000 threshold for Magna X is kind of problematic. Maybe you can skirt around that with like an Anju Woman Ace who gives Alliance, but um, that's another story. Those are just tech cards, right? So what's fun about this deck? Right now it's got access to the Vaccine Engine, which <laughs> means that it uh, doesn't pay for much. It's got like a discount on everything it feels like. So you can go from, you know, your Patamon to your Dominimon for essentially three memory, like like you would like Magnamonix Antibody. Additionally, Dominimon makes it really difficult for your opponents to stop your momentum. Uh, Dominimon has a cool little effect where if one of your angel cards would be removed from the board, you can pop a security off and they're not removed from the board. This, uh, so that effect is for good for everything except battle, I believe. And Barrier from Godomon, the BT14 Godomon, I think it was, or 15? 15, maybe BT15 Godomon. So Dominimon's effect plus Barrier essentially means that your Digimon are like impenetrable or like untouchable. The key part here though is that you're trading security cards for those Digimon. So you have to make that distinction with it, what, what do you like value at that point in the game. Uh, but Dominimon, Dominimon lets you play an angel card from your security. If it's like a Magna Anjumon, there's one that lets you like immediately evolve for minus two cost which means you get two level sixes in a single turn very quickly. Uh, or you can just like hold on to the ace cards and keep level five there for the potential ace. Both the options here, Seraphimon, the uh, Afanimon, as well as the Cherrymon are all like decent options in this case. 
And then you also have access to like level four, sorry, level five ace cards as well, which just help you recover and keep your security really healthy in the case of like Dominion protecting your boards. Um, some of the challenges, like I said before, uh, you are trading security for board safety. So you have to be really cognizant that your opponent isn't like tricking you and setting you up to like burn all your security. And then they just like find a way to kill you. Um, there's that. And then uh, high DP walls are really tough to swing over. I mentioned before, like 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, not the biggest stat lines. You can get a lot of Digimon, but like you can't get a lot of big Digimon. So you got to find a way to thwart that uh, or get rid of that uh, that issue with the deck. That's how that though, pretty good. Lots of DP minus, um, lots of recovery, pretty much everything you'd come to expect from, from Yellow. Uh, I wish that we had a little bit more time with the, this set because I think that Angels would, if I had to guess like one deck that would either perform that would probably perform better given more time it'd probably be this one here diaboromon so this set i felt like everybody was thinking the same thing in that who cares about diaboromon right now because bt17 comes out and then we get the clock and we get an alternate win condition so and the deck gets more support then so bt17 is going to be diaboromon's day to shine screw ex6 whatever that's like throwaway stuff but actually, the cards in this set are really freaking good. Great offense. Uh, defense is so-so. Great speed. Removal is also so-so. But I think that's because the way this deck wants to win is just by flooding the board. And in the case that you have too many things your opponent can't deal with, then you typically just win the game. The new Dia Roman effect is incredible. On start of main phase and on Digivolve, he lets you play a Dia Roman token. And then I think on your opponent's turn, once per turn, Whenever they would play a Digimon, you can just play another Diaboromon token. So whenever he comes down, you have the option of just going and getting three tokens immediately. That's not counting any of the other effects on board. None of the Tamers, none of that. Speaking of the other effects on board, this deck works particularly well with a lot of the older cards. Um, the synergy is fantastic. Uh, there's like the older um, Karamon and the older Chrysalimon that essentially lets you draw a card or gain one memory whenever you play Digimon with the same name as the that current stack. And in the case of Diaboromon, that's a really easy bar to, to get over, but the effects are not once per turn. They can happen over and over and over and you can keep gaining memory, which is inf like amazing. Now, in the case of this Diaboromon here, he's essentially a one cost. Sorry, two cost, my bad, yeah. Uh, the main phase is, yeah, not next turn. But yeah, if your opponent plays Digimon, you also wouldn't gain that memory, but yeah, it's only your turn effect. So basically he gets like, a little bit of a buff. Also, there's an option card called Beast Cyclone. I don't know if anybody knows, but I don't know if anybody knows what this option card is, but it's, uh, it's actually a pretty old one. So the new Diaboromon, while being able to play lots of tokens, takes everything one step further in that um, all of those Diaboromon have jamming and blocker, which means uh, they function perfectly well with Beast Cyclone, this three cost option card here. It says if all, all of your Digimon with blocker or reboot gain security attack plus one. Yeah. You want to talk about deer and headlights? A guy like played like three tokens against me and I thought I had enough to like live. And then he played this card the next turn. I was like, well, <laughs> shake my hand. <laughs> it's time for me to enter the scoop phase, my friend. Uh, yeah, this card is like fits so well with the deck. Um, so you basically double all of your attack power like that. The deck does offensively pretty well for itself. The speed is great. Some of the challenges though is that it does still feel very momentum heavy. In a lot of cases, it feels like you live and die by finding your uh, Son of the Arata Tamers. Because like the more of those you have set up, whenever you get to the Diaboromon, it's just more tokens to flood the board. You can gain a bunch of memory to essentially make this a free uh, level 6 Digivolve. Uh, you can play the Cyclone afterward with the memory you got back in order to like just win the game out right right there. Well, I guess the turn after, because they don't have, oh no, they would get rushed, yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, I think an old Crystal that gives everything rush too. So the, yeah, there's that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the sky is the limit really. If you find the Tamer, the Black Tamer card, then it's great because you just get, each one is essentially another Dear Bordermon token for free. If you don't, then you might struggle to find a victory. Uh, once we find, or once the deck has a way to like more easily pull out Tamers, that is also like Diaboromon Fiend, I think it'll be a, a, an, an amazing deck. Right now, I see some people even running like the um, the level five Mamimon that searches for Tamers specifically and just plays them uh, just so that they can get the uh, like the security of always like getting to a Tamer very quickly. The other challenge here is just Pillamon. Uh, you can't play Digimon by FX. Uh, yeah, and he... <laughs> Floodgate for playing Digimon YFX versus a deck that plays Digimon YFX is uh, GG's. Yeah, so you have to get, and because there's not a lot of like removal removal, like a lot of the removal from this deck is like, hey, did Digivolve something? Yeah, Pillowmon as a level three just kind of sticks around. 
But King, you're absolutely right. I got jump scare B Cyclone one time, and I'll never forget that in my life. Uh, so let's see, what's next? We've got, ah, uh, Mirage Galgamon. Mirage Galgamon is similar to Finner Lugamon, and that is like an OTK style deck. In the past, it relied a lot on the Tamers in order to make that happen. Whereas nowadays, that's not necessarily the case. You can utilize the new Yokomon level two in order to slot cards underneath, or uh, you can utilize some of the more, um, the level threes that, pl that force your opponent to draw a card in tandem with the burst mode to basically get his effect off twice, plus the level five. And then like, uh, yeah, like the, the deck just has tons of hits. And so, I, excuse me, I mentioned this before, but you're pretty much always gonna have jamming with this with this deck. Now, in the past, like the deck lived and thrived on the fact that it could just like have jamming for all of its eggs. But once the uh, the Pokemon got uh, limited to one per deck, uh, folks were just running three like three blue eggs and then one one Pokemon, hoping their opponent wouldn't shuffle their their egg deck and then put the Pokemon on top and pray. Uh, those dirty, dirty cheaters. But now they don't have to do that. They can just like run the Betamon. Um, or like the Galgamon from from BT16, and you'll you're guaranteed jamming pretty much. In fact, if you don't have jamming, it's like a rarity. Uh, the BT13 mock Galgamon finds a perfect spot in the meta right now, just because it bypasses blocking and attack redirection entirely. Which means if your opponent has a big wall, you don't really care. And then finally, uh, Mirage Galgamon just punishes Ukumon. Ukumon is a card that is splashable in virtually any deck in the game. In my opinion, like Digivolve Ukumon on turn one to give your opponent one memory and then make the, turn, the search the second turn is the best starter in the game, like the best like opener in the game by far. And then um, some of the challenges, uh, the deck is an OTK deck. So you just like swing, 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 become active every time. But if you hit a landmine option, card in security uh ggs because it's gonna be really hard to like build that back up that stack because you typically like spent all your resources in the one otk turn to get your mirage galgamon and beyond and uh you know a guy of well-placed guy of force would be traumatic the other uh challenges for this deck is that without the otk you just cannot win um this deck doesn't have the ability to like do chip damage fast enough uh, you're basically just paying normal costs for cards. The way that you skirt that is by using uh, like loan cards in the form of training cards, mental training, as well as the blue memory boost in order to loan out some memory right now and then later on you can cash that out to get it back later. Uh, and all the while you're just like searching all the pieces you need. So outside of the, the OTK, it's not really gonna happen, Chief. But yeah, very powerfully, very, sorry, very powerful offensively. Defense is so-so. Um, the deck has some really good bouncing cards, and bouncing specifically is really strong in the game because things like Numamon want you to destroy their stuff, and if you just bounce it instead, then they're just up shit creek because they, they don't get any of their effects. Yeah, lots of little things here make this deck really shine, and the form of removal and bouncing cards is great. The Ukamon punish because of the Mirage Galgamon gaining memory every time your opponent would draw or like uh, gain cards in hand from an effect on both turns is really strong. The removal, like I said before, is great. Uh, so that's Mirage, Galgamon, and then, ah, Mastamon. So this is a deck that I think a lot of folks <laughs> had really high hopes for. As soon as they released the secret rare Mirai Tamer, people were like, oh, it's time. Mastamon players, we've been living in darkness for far too long, but no, we finally rise up in this set. And, uh, it's an alright deck. <laughs> uh, Mastamon is... It's not bad. I think that some of the stuff that uh, Misao did definitely show that the deck can be improved upon based on what we already have uh, here in in Asia. So I kind of expect the English version of the game to kind of take up the mantle and continue running with what this deck can do. I think we haven't really explored a lot of the stuff that it has access to in the form of like, the angel cards. You've also even got like the demon lord cards, like the fallen angel stuff as well. The fallen, you have fallen angels from like the demon lord realm of cards so you can play with at the same time so i think there's a lot that this deck can do it just hasn't really been touched very much so things that are cool the new level fives that play Murray for free are a godsend um the Jewelmon you see here plays a Murray tamer if you don't have one on the board and then if you do you just get something street attack minus two instead and then the lady Devimon can either pop a level four or play a Murray tamer for free both those effects are so good playing one mastemon so this is cool. It's, the deck almost has like a, a steamroll effect where once you get the first Mastamon up, she lets you essentially play another Digimon that's like an Anjuomon or a Lady Devimon. And just having the one on the board sets you up for a potential Mastamon Ace. Because of the new Blast DNA Digivolve, you can have one Digimon on board, one in hand, and then just use that as a, like the requirements for a Blast DNA. 
What's also really neat is that uh, DNA Digivolving, if your opponent attacks that Digimon before it was uh, evolved, essentially cancels out the attack. Because the way the game works is that a D Digimon that DNA Digivolved is a new Digimon on board. It is not the iteration of the older one. So if your opponent attacks, for example, your Anjwoman and you blast Digivolve it into a Mastermon Ace, the Anjwoman no longer exists. The Mastermon Ace is there, but the Anjwoman is not there, so the attack fizzles out. So defensively, that's a really cool little tech. Um, and then Murray, the new Murray is really good. Uh, where where I don't think you need four copies of it in the deck. One Murray will give you enough to get back into the game for only four memory, which is amazing. So you can play a Gatomon or an Anjwoman or Lady Devimon. Typically the Godomon uh, from the starter deck for five cost. You can rest the Murray game on memory and then you can immediately evolve it into an Anjuomon or a Lady Devimon for one cost. Or, or was it memory plus one and then the Godomon makes it uh, cost minus two. So it just becomes a zero or sorry, just a one cost card. With that one Anjuomon or Lady Devimon you've set up for four memory, you can blast into a Mastermon Ace. So as long as you have her on the field, you never really feel, and you have a Godomon in hand, you never feel like you're out of the game. Some of the challenges for this deck though, this deck does have some, in it's in its current form, I think that it may change in the future, but in its current form, keeping Digimon on board for the potential ace is kind of problematic. The Anjuomon and the Lady Devimon are notably at 6,000 DP, which is a threshold that a lot of decks can hit, and because they don't have armor purge like say a Rapidmon would have, they have to just kind of eat it when they die. Unfortunate, but it, it's true. Uh, the other the other part here is that um, currently, like armor purge plus high DPS plus effective visibility is really hard uh, to play around. So, Mastamon Ace, while it's a good card, it doesn't allow you to play something like a Lusamon Fall Down mode, which is like really good removal. In fact, you can't play Fallen. I think you can't play Fallen Angels. I think with. Uh, I'm sorry, Mastamon is not a Fallen Angel. My bad. You have to play uh, Angels or Fallen Angels. Uh, with the Mastamon card here, and because of that, like it locks out some of your potential options, which means even like at its best, you're only like popping a level four with the Lady Devimon Ace. Oh, sorry, the Lady Devimon, and uh, it's not great for you know a Magnemon X antibody. Like, you can get a Mastamon on board, but then you have to basically have the Anjuomon Alliance effect, and then use that to hopefully get over a Magnemon Ace. That's kind of tough sometimes. So yeah, just the current environment it finds itself in makes it kind of problematic for you to like get over some of the more problematic decks in the game. And that brings us to Magnamon Armor. Uh, this is the version of armor decks that has become popular recently. And I think I still personally believe that uh, Vaccine Armor is the best version of all three out of all three of these. But uh, Magnamon Armor is it's just good. I mean, it's I can't I'm not gonna say it's a sit here and say it's a bad deck. It definitely is not. But Magna X's defense basically makes him like the wall. He is the wall that you have to climb right now in the game. If you can't get over Magna X, like you have no chance of winning because you'll never just beat this guy. It is a, a nice little blend of like level quick level three damage and level fours and the protection of a level six. So I've seen some decks run the route of like some, playing some of the jamming Vmon. So you can have like the Magnamon X antibody on board. It's kind of like the big the big like mother, and then you have like little like jamming Vmons on the sides, kind of like doing chip damage. Uh, to like close up the game a little bit faster. So that's pretty cool. Also the defense of some of the armor perch for level fours is really nice. Like the fact that one can pump himself up, one gives you card draw, and one is like the disruption as far as the DP minus, or sorry, not DP minus, but the DP evolve is concerned off of the Magnum you see here from the Terrier Mon or Double Typhoon starter deck. Some of the challenges. Um, the raw version of this deck, and I mentioned this before, it can sometimes be a challenge to actually activate the Magnum X antibodies uh, invincibility effect and sometimes he, you can like do it you have to do it in like unopportune ways where you have to activate the effect first which would allow you to unsuspend even when he's already active which kind of sucks uh, so you miss out on like the second swing there but you get the guaranteed invincibility uh, you can circumvent that using some of the option cards I mentioned before like blinding ray but you're also burning your own life force to keep him around it's kind of like the angels dichotomy where you have to like trade board safety for security and you have to kind of make that distinction in, in your head at that, that point in the game. It is one of like, I think the meta defining decks right now, Magnamon, or like this card specifically, like it's boss monster is like the, one of the meta defining, meta defining cards in the game right now. Uh, giving something, it turns out giving something complete invincibility to every effect is uh, pretty good. Who would have thought? Also because like, I don't know if you guys played the uh, Vmon armor rush decks before, but the deck was pretty simple to use and it kind of remains the same way. You just have like an extra step now where you can go into the Magna X, but you still have all the armor cards at your disposal if you want to use some of those as well. And if you folks aren't aware, 
Holy crap, the new Flame Drummond coming, I think, as a box topper for BT17 is insane. Let me see. It's this one right here. I, it's a promo cover, I think it's a box topper for... It's called the Update Pack. Yeah, I think it's a box topper for BT17, but... Armor Purge and Raid. So it can change attack targets to the biggest thing on the board. Whenever this card's attack target is switched, your opponent adds the top card of the straight stack to their hand. That's insane. So you not only got to worry about you not only got to worry about the the Magnamon X, like popping security off two at a time, but you have to worry about this guy and the jamming Vmon. It's kind of wild. Good lord! Like this only this is only support for the deck, and the deck's already really good. So this is only only like more power for it. Okay, that's Magnamon armor. Uh, it's pretty straightforward deck. Really strong defensively. Pretty good offensively. Can't really complain. Uh, so that pretty that's all the decks that I wanted to talk about. So let's talk really quickly, I guess to kind of sum up the entire EX6 set as a whole. It, even though this set had purple and yellow as their highlights, it really feels like it's yellow show right now. Um, yellow hits like two of the most important, like, I don't know, I don't even know how, how to call these, like the most important points of the meta right now, perfectly. DP minus to get rid of armor purge and virtually anything. I think DP minus might be right now a little bit too strong of an effect that because there's not much that stops DP minus and it's a game rule whereas like deletion is kind of like an effect that you would like, give that you would not give but you would like do DP minus is like a game rule that is hard to circumvent like it's hard to like get around that and then the second piece is memory advantage uh, I said it when I talked about the Patamon engine but memory like they they spend so little memory to do so much that when you're you're looking at it from any other deck's point of view you're like how how? <laughs> Why? This, I have so many questions. Why, Bandai? Give me my great Monarch Santee body back if you're gonna let me, if you're gonna let Patamon do this to me. Some of the interesting, po interesting points about the the game so far, I think is like the most interesting thing that happened is like the resurgence of Mirage Galgamon, where I don't think a lot of people really had him on their radar, but like the side man, or like the side event at the World Finals, like the Japanese side event, the World Finals really show people that Mirage Diagomon could do great things because it, it hits on so many of like counterpoints really well. Pulling cards back to hand, bypassing blockers in a attack redirection, and being able to OTK in one fell swoop and do it with jamming really easily is uh, basically like, like revive the deck. Uh, some of the blast aces, so the Mastamon Ace, the Ragnarok Ace are the new DNA Digivolves that uh, can be blast uh, blasted, which means like I said before, you have the neat, neat little defensive tech where you can essentially stop a Digimon from taking an attack by essentially like making it not exist on the board anymore. <laughs> and then there's the new scramble card. So this is the one, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of information about because they've only been out for about like two weeks or so. Maybe three weeks, I think, at the, as of the, the stream. But uh, their use right now is pretty niche. So they can do some really powerful stuff, and I assume they're only going to be get, become more popular as the game's lifespan goes on. But to, I think a lot of folks, what's the word I want to use here? Delight, they're not like immediate four staples, like four of staples for every deck of like a certain color. And I, I think that's a really good thing for the game. So the fact that they're not super useful for, by every deck is actually a good thing, I think. And so that's pretty much EX6, I think, as of now in Japan. With only one more week left, I don't think much is going to change. I, I doubt that. I think most folks right now are just pretty much getting ready for BT17. And like I've seen, even when I went to my local card shop, I saw a guy playing with um, the new Lugamon stuff using proxies. And uh, he's like, yeah, it seems pretty strong. I'm um, having some trouble against Angels and Patamon in, <laughs> in particular. But uh, yeah, I think that the new, the new tools for Lugamon are pretty interesting. So we'll have to see. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the EX6 as a whole is really a fun set to play with. The While the Demon Lords aren't the strongest decks that exist, I think it's a really cool deck. And if you like Royal Knights, I think you'll like Demon Lords as well. And uh, it's still, it's not a bad deck by any measure. So yeah, if you like that sort of thing, definitely play into it. Play with it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I even have my, my own version over in the closet here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess that's going to be my TED Talk. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to take some. And then I think we'll probably talk a little bit about BT17 and then probably wrap up. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, shoot them, shoot them my way now. All right, folks. Well, uh, I think it's about time for me to mosey on out of here. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys, you folks had fun. You learned a couple things or two. You guys have a great afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are. I'm going to get out of here. I'll be good. Bye.